Okay. So this is what I mentioned earlier. So you do this general construction of H row. It's no more than grabbing the original model and changing everything by row in the form that we describe. If the row function that defines a perturbation is continuous and the original system that you start from satisfies the hybrid basic conditions, then the H row will satisfy the hybrid basic conditions as well. So this is saying that all the good properties we've been talking about since last week will be preserved for the perturbed system. Now, the next result is the one that extends the dependence on the initial conditions to the general perturbation. So grab H satisfying the higher basic conditions and suppose that you have an H that is pre-forward complete from a compact set, so every solution from K is um, bounded or complete. So what we can say now is if you're giving me a perturbation function row that is continuous, if it is not continuous, it's very easy to make it continuous, but let's say it is continuous. Then for every row, for every epsilon that defines how close I like to have the perturbed and unperturbed solutions, now with general perturbations, and every tau that defines over which hybrid time window or horizon I like that to happen, there exists a delta with the following property. So now I'm going to grab my H row, but instead of putting row, I will multiply by this delta, that row. So what is this doing? Um, I have a row function that I'm very excited about, right? I have these wishes of these very large perturbations. What this result says is, wait a second, you can't allow any row. Actually, what I'm going to be allow you to do is to keep the shape of row, but the size will be modulated by this delta. So again, if I pick this alpha for the timer problem, maybe someone says, well, alpha is too large. You can only pick half alpha. So this, this uh, delta will be half, okay? But it, it will be allowing you to use this shape of this row. So let's say that now I have H sub a new row, which is the row that I was interested in, multiplied by this number delta. So I'm going to call that H sub delta row. And the property is the property we wrote before. For every solution, that starts from k plus that delta, there exists, for the perturbed system, there exists an unperturbed solution such that these guys are graphically close by a distance of epsilon over a window of tau. Okay? That's pretty much what we can do under the hybrid basic conditions, under general perturbations. The last thing, which covers a lot of the material in chapter 7.3, so I wrote a summary type of version, and I'm not giving a theorem reference because it's embedded there, is the following. So far, we have properties that hold over tau windows. Under what conditions can we extend these properties to hold over the entire window? In other words, when can I say that H, uh, that phi delta and phi are closed over the entire domain? That works when you have a stability in addition to your property of the system. So this is what this result is trying to say. Grab an H, and say that the hybrid basic conditions hold. Grab an A and say that that A is compact and a UGPAS set, like, for instance, the bouncing ball problem or the sample and hold problem with a compact set. 
then what happens is the following. For every epsilon larger than zero and a compact set K, there exists a row that you can tolerate such that for every solution to the perturbed system by that row, we have that, remember that you read that for the last homework problem, section 3.5, if you have UGPAS, there is always a KL bound. But now the KL bound is going to be with an epsilon. In other words, remember this KL function will go to zero as t plus j goes to infinity. That's the definition of the L property of a KL function. Now when this goes to zero, this beta goes to zero, you still have this epsilon constant here. So in other words, you get what you expect. Under perturbations, you don't converge to A, but you converge to a neighborhood of it. Okay? And this is for every solution phi with, this should be delta, with phi delta zero in K plus delta ball. So this is saying that this epsilon is now closeness to A as T T plus J go to infinity. So this is how close I would like to be to that set. And this compact set is mandatory. So this is saying that solutions initial condition restricted to compact set. This result as is written here is what is called uh, semi-global because of the, K, the K, the compact set, practical because of the epsilon, uh, uniform asymptotic with pre-stability. is preserved or is guaranteed. under HVCs and a compact UGPAS set. And that's what happens in typical problems, okay? When you analyze your system, you say, you analyze it without perturbations. This happens also in continuous time or discrete time. You say, okay, I have a Lyapunov function and I prove something about the whole state space. When the perturbations kick in, unless you can find a better Lyapunov function and a better controller, let's say, that is going to reject the perturbations, all you can expect is that if you want to converge very close to the set A, so this epsilon is very, very small, then the raw function will actually not be um, very large. In other words, if you want to convert very, very close, the perturbations that you can tolerate will be very, very small. But if you allow, allow yourself some margin, or you want to convert to some epsilon that is somewhat large, then, um, because you're okay with that, then the perturbations will be somewhat meaningful and useful in practice. Um, make sense? Mm -hmm. 
I didn't want to spend a lot of time on these arguments because all of these are existence arguments. In other words, we wrote down conditions for sufficient conditions for stability and whatnot. We never use the perturbations in those models. We now can guarantee the syntactic stability of these sets, but under the hybrid basic conditions, these things come for free. How useful are these? So I ran out of time, but I'll send you an email with a number of links to papers that explain how these robustness results actually are useful. In principle, they are mathematically useful, and some applications show that they have some power in order to, to compensate for, for perturbations. Current research is showing that you actually need to come up with a slightly more sophisticated Lyapunov functions, which are called control Lyapunov functions. Okay. So I teach, I will teach that course next year, where newer and ex explicit perturbations are into the system. So it will be a year from now, actually, spring. Okay, so I'll send an announcement which will be about control design. As you saw, we didn't get to do control because again, it's only a quarter. But now the question is, how can you compensate for perturbations and make this epsilon zero, if you will? Under perturbations, I like to still have this. The only way to do this is to have a model of the perturbation or to be lucky at rejecting it because the perturbation probably hits a zero of the system or is filtered out by some uh, mechanism in the system. So that's uh, one of the things you could probably learn in in that course which is going to be called Advanced Nonlinear Control Design. I don't know if it's listed yet, but it's being proposed. Okay. But much of chapter 7 is about these robustness properties that you can read.